Hey guys, it's Daniel Grove. I am in the Camera Exchange Studio here in San Antonio, Texas, and I wanna give you a little brief tour and explanation as to the equipment that I use, and more importantly, why I use what I use. So studio photography is a whole different world for me now. I've been getting into it lately. I am traditionally a location-based photographer. So I go outside, I find locations, I work with the sun. Uh, I use flash usually outside sometimes, depending on the style that I want but I'm very much a location photographer. So now I've been branching into studio because I've been doing a lot of headshots and video work, of course, is usually studio settings. So here's what I use. I'm shooting with a Canon um, R6, a mirrorless camera, great with the autofocus with faces, which makes my job so much easier doing portraits. And I am using a Godox light system. So my controller that's on top of my camera is the X-Pro. And that wirelessly triggers all my lights right when I take a picture using radio frequencies. Um, so my main light is the uh, AD200. That's a, that's a 200 watt strobe at full power. And it's basically like a super flash. It's not quite a full strobe, but it's way more than a, a flash. It's about four times brighter than a typical speed light flash. And I love it. That's what I use for my main light because it's the most powerful. If I need that much power, I have it. I don't usually go above one quarter or one half power though. Um, my uh, backlights back here, which I'm using as rim lights, let's see if you can see these guys. Uh, these are speed lights. These are Godox um, 850 version two speed lights. And I have them on a uh, strip light softbox, which has a grid. So well, the reason why is, uh, well, before behind the grid is actually a diffusing cloth. The white cloth back there makes the light coming out of this generally and hopefully even, right? It's an even distribution of light going out of the box instead of like a hot spot and weak spot. So it comes out pretty even. And then the grid absorbs and kills the light that's going out this way and that way and only allows straight light to come out, which is good because you get less leakage, less bleeding of light on the backdrop, which you don't normally want. You just want it going forwards onto the subject. And I'm using this is as rim lights uh, to get that nice edge lighting, which I really like. It separates them from the background. It gives a dramatic and epic look, which for most of my type of stuff is really what I'm going for. And by the way, these wheeled uh, light stands are awesome. They come with a studio here. And if I had my own studio, I'd definitely get hard floors and wheeled uh, light stands because they're really handy. So I'm gonna use those as my side and back or hair lights and they are speed lights. Those are the older versions. Why? Well, because I don't want the new ones because they cost more money and I don't use TTL. TTL is a feature in uh, many, many popular speed lights that you usually pay a little bit extra for. I just personally like to control my flashes manually. Even at weddings, I'm dialing up and down the power to get what I want. Um, TTL is basically auto for your flash power and I don't like that. So uh, I opted to get the older version, save a few bucks and they do great. They perform really well for me. And the 8200 is a great, uh, a great and still very portable mini strobe or super flash, <laughs> whichever you prefer to call it. Now concerning lenses that I use at portrait sessions like this, I really like to use my 100 millimeter 2.8 lens. This is an, uh, I think it's the second version that came out maybe like 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm not using the latest and greatest equipment here. I'm using what works for me and what I have, but I love that 100 millimeter lens because it gets great uh, compression, which is good for portraits, and also gets good bokeh if I need that. And it doubles as a macro lens too for when I do weddings and things like that, I can get some really great detail shots. But in the studio, it's a great portrait lens because I'm just shooting one person. Usually I'm not shooting groups, but I don't do a whole lot of more than one person in a studio. So that 100 millimeter is great because I can get maybe 15 feet back, get a nice headshot or you know waist up shot and uh, it gets great compression and really good detail and sharpness. Um, I'll also use my 50 millimeter because I can go to f1.8 if I want to get more bokeh, get more of a dramatic blurry background or you know there's the details in the back uh, blurred. And uh, it's also a good portrait lens. It just doesn't have that uh, impressive compression that the 100 millimeter has. And I also have a 16 to 35 lens, which I don't use a whole lot in studio unless I want to get a wide angle shot, which isn't really common in studio. I don't want to show the, you know, outside the background. So I try to keep tight and close so I don't have to do a bunch of Photoshop cleanup and, you know, get rid of the backdrop, get rid of the wall, all the light stands peeking in the edge of the shot. I uh, try to keep it clean and simple. So my 50 millimeter is good, but my 100 millimeter is even better. So let's get started with this photo shoot and have some fun. 